Okay, welcome to the uh, second video where I'm going to show you how to create your property line, your boundary around the site, and then I'll show you how to reorient the building. If, let's say, you didn't want this to be the southern facade, we could flip it around to where, rotate it around, I should say, where this becomes the north and this side uh, gets the southern exposure. Okay, to begin, find your massing and site tab. May or may not be placed in the same location as mine. Over here on the right hand side, we'll use the property line tool and create by sketching. As you do this, you have all these different line tools available to you. And uh, the line tool is, of course, the easiest one to use. The rectangle tool could be very beneficial here if you have a simple rectangular site. And then I'll show you in a minute how to use some of these arcs, arc lines. Okay, to begin with, we just want a property line that follows the road, so a straight line across the front. And I'll just kind of guess where that ends over here on the side. Okay, if I get something like this where it looks like I've got a canal and I need to follow some of these contours, then I'm going to start off by using the start and radius arc, which allows you to just pick an endpoint and then determine the curve. Okay, and I could actually use that tool uh, for the remainder of this segment until I get to this edge. Instead, however, I'm going to try the tangent end arc, which will just give me a curve that's based somewhat on the end of the last arc. Something like this. So you don't have as much control here, but if you have real slow sweeping curves like I do, this should be a pretty good option. You can see that one's not going to follow it exactly, but I'm not really too concerned about it. Okay, and once we get to this edge, at this point it could be a straight line that just connects the two sides, or perhaps it's an arc through there. Whatever. Um, whatever's best. So I'm about ready to use the green check mark to accept this sketch and then it'll convert all those purple lines into an actual property line. Before I do that, however, I just want to point out that this has to be an enclosed loop. That's the only way this can work. If any of these lines are overlapping or if you have a gap, then it won't accept it when you go to finish the edit mode. So click here. Looks like it worked. We'll take our image, just drag it off to the side so that we can actually see the property lines that we just created. Okay, perfect. Now the next thing to do is to select those property lines and click on edit table what it's going to do after you say yes is it's going to generate all the meets and bounds for every segment that I just drew. Okay, a pretty incredible function that you only get in Revit. Hard to appreciate. I'm going to say OK here and essentially what I've just done is I've locked all these in place. Now I can still move this left and right but there's no way now to rotate any of these lines which is great if we intend to rotate the building. Uh, and if you want to rotate the building, we'll now go to the Manage tab. Um, before we do that, under Properties, change your orientation to True North. And then under Manage, the very bottom tool here, we're going to say Rotate True North. And you can either use this line by clicking twice uh, about a center rotation point. I can click here and then give it a distance. Click again and you can see the effect. Even though this thing moved about on me, it hasn't been rotated like the building has been. Okay, the other way to do that would have been similar, only this time I'm going to rotate true north and instead of using this line, I can plug in an angle. And remember that it wants to go counterclockwise, so if I want to rotate this to the right, then put in a negative number. Uh, let's say negative 25. It's negative 25 degrees. There's the rotation. Then click and drag the site back into place. And that's it. We're done.